word is there is freedom to worship God. And whenever it is hard for you to get into an attitude to worship God, that means that you're bound by something else. Sin brings misery, death, depression in your life, but the Spirit of the Lord liberates you from all the consequences of sin. So when you worship God, you should come in here free. You should come in here lifted up. But if you come with a guilt consciousness, if you come with a sin consciousness, it would be very hard for you to worship God because you know deep in your mind that you gave your body to someone else. When you know that you gave your body to someone else, when you gave your body to a certain addiction, to a certain vice, it's hard for you to worship God. Paul said, you were once like this. <laughs> you were a slave to sin. But Christ redeemed you so that your worship may be free towards him. Watch what he says. I speak in human terms. Look at this. I want you to see verse 19. I speak in because of the weakness of the flesh. Oh, can I exegete this thing? If, if, if Paul is speaking in human terms, that means Paul have departed from being a human. If Paul is speaking in human terms, that means Paul is no longer human. He's divine. He's in the full expression of his divinity as a son of God. But he says to you, I'm going to speak in human terms because of the weakness of your sorts, your sin nature. So I've got to begin to baby you into the reality of this major truth. Look at your name and say, neighbor, do you want human stories? Or do you want divine mysteries? Woo! For just as you, here it is, presented your members as slaves of uncleanness and of lawlessness leading to more lawlessness, so now present your members as slaves of righteousness for holiness. See, you are presenting your body, you are presenting your ideals, you are presenting your ways, you are presenting your posture on the altar to God as an offering because you are a true worshiper. See, when you present it to God, God does not have to force worship out of you. You give it volitionally. See, when a person gives themselves volitionally to God, freely to God, he uses them and gives them more grace. When God has to pull your arm to worship him, then he says, okay, I'm just going to give you sufficient grace. Oh, I'll catch that next week. Y'all catch that next week. See, Jonah, he has sufficient grace because he kept being disobedient. Paul says, I receive more grace. I am what I am by the grace of God. Hallelujah to God. See, when you understand this, you'll begin to say, Lord, I refuse to fight against your will. I refuse to fight against the call of God on my life. I understand that worship is not just a moment. Worship is a lifestyle. It's a call that I have responded to. So I'm going to give you my whole self. Not sometimes, 24-7. Uh-oh. 24-7, I give you my life. Samuel was a true worshiper. He stayed around the temple, grew up in the temple. That's why none of his words fell to the ground, because he didn't speak in human terms. The very kol, which is a voice in Hebrew, the very dabar, word in Hebrew, was in his mouth. So everything he said, it never fell to the ground, because he was intoxicated with the Spirit of God. When a true worshiper is intoxicated with the spirit of God, everything they say is wisdom. Everything they say is revelation. Everything they say, you better pay attention to. Glory be to God. Here's, here's another one, Romans 12. Romans 12, verse 1 to 2. Someone say worship. It means giving your body, your soul, and your mind to God. Paul says, I beseech you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, or termos, that you, here it is, present your bodies as a living sacrifice. Uh oh It is your body, the vehicle, the instrument that holds your mind, that holds your thoughts, that holds your feelings. Present that to God. That means that you must be ready to be a holo holocaustic worshiper. Look at your name and say, neighbor, are you a holocaustic worshiper? I'm not talking about the Jews, you know, what they went through. We, 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 we feel sorry for that, amen. But I'm talking about you presenting your body as a holocaust. But God totally consumes you by his fire. That's all holocaust means. Holos means whole. Costus is the Latin word for fire, which means that God has consumed you by his fire. You are consumed by the consuming fire of God, where it's no longer I, but you, Lord. This is, this is what Paul is saying. Present your body as a living sacrifice. Here it is, holy. Someone say holy. 
that is the Greek word hagias, it literally means to be set apart, to be different, to be unique. What other people can get by with, you can't. You are holy to God. Why are you worried about what the unholy is doing? They're common. You're uncommon. And he says, when you become distinct, because you got to be holy for, I'm holy. And when you become distinct, then you become acceptable to me. See, many of us, we're presenting our bodies to God in an unholy attitude. See, we're presenting our bodies to God with an, with an unholy lifestyle. And it's unacceptable to God. But you've got to present your body where he says, okay, I can accept you. It has to be acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. I want you to highlight that word service because it's the Greek word latruo. Latruo is where we, get, where we get the word liturgy from. Latruo, it literally means your reasonable worship. It is a priestly type of worship. That's what latruo means. Latruo. It is a priestly type of worship. And it's reasonable. Which means now the mind of Christ has overtaken your mind that when it comes to worshiping God, you truly understand why you come to worship God. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the anachinosis, the renewing, the renovating of your mind. That you, here it is, may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So it starts off with you yielding your members to Christ. Yielding your member to the Holy Spirit. And when we do that, don't you know prosperity is around the corner? Hallelujah. When you just obey what the Spirit says, he gives you abundance. That's the, the, the main reason for the function of the prophets was to begin to remind the people, don't worship idol gods. Get back to God because he wants to shower rain on you. Paul, Isaiah says, if you be willing and obedient, you should eat the not the bad of the land. God says, listen, if you just be willing, if you give yourself to me, I'm going to prosper you. He tells Haggai, listen, they've been building their own house and they're leaving my house in shambles. Tell them I'm going to put holes in their pockets. Tell them not to worship the silver and gold, for the gold is mine, the silver is mine. Tell them to get back to building the kingdom. Because God understands. That it's very easy to worship things that are contrary to its will. It's very easy to be distracted by catching up with the Joneses, by competing with natural men when Jesus said, listen, you need to compete with me. I'm telling you. And God says, until we get this attitude to say, Lord, I surrender all. My pride, my arrogance, I surrender all. My bitterness, people that I don't want to forgive, I surrender all. I surrender all to you. When you get to that, until we get to that place, prosperity is not guaranteed. What comes today can be left, can, can be left out tomorrow. God says to the, to the fool that wanted to save his stuff. He was saving his stuff, but making build, bigger storehouses. And God said, die fool, don't you know that you will die today? And what you have will be given to another because you were not rich towards God? God wants us to come back to a place where we are centering ourselves to worship him. Nothing that matters at all. See, what happens is when the enemy messes with our mind, he builds a stronghold in our mind to keep us from worshiping God. See, if the enemy can affect your mind, if he can interrupt your thought pattern towards God, he has distracted you, and now you're thinking about the mundane instead of God. And when you start thinking about the mundane instead of God, guess what? The enemy has put you or made you as a captive. And you are not called to be a captive. Look at your name and say, neighbor, I'm not called to be a captive. Tell, I'm not called to be a prisoner. You're called to be free as sons of God. You are called to pull down strongholds that you may worship God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Zechariah 9, verse 12. The Bible says, look ye up, you prisoners of hope. Oh, I, think, I think it's Zechariah chapter 9, verse 12. I think it is. Don't worry about that. You can look it up. It's 12, 9 or something. But he says, look ye up, you prisoners of hope. Look ye up. For you shall receive double for the things that any man stole from you. If you can begin to shift your perspective, you're going to receive double. Glory. God wants to give some of you a double, double a rim of grace. He wants to give some of you double blessings. Some of you are called to receive double fold. The things that you lost, God said, don't worry about that. Focus on me because I'm about to add more to your life. Jesus. Just ask Job. Job lost everything. God says, listen, Job, 
Now that you know me, I'm about to give you double, but. Someone say but. There's always a but in there. Sometimes we can't receive the blessing because I, okay, shut your mouth. He says, but you must pray for your friends. Uh-oh. I'm going to give you double, but you got to pray for those who didn't believe in you. Pray for those who misinterpret your situation. You got to pray for those who thought all was going to fail for you. I will give you double, but pray for them. See, your mind has to be free to God. Even Job said this, though he slay me, yet will I. That's a worshiper. The Lord give it, the Lord take it away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. That's a, that's a worshiper. I didn't come to worship this. I come to worship him. All the days of my appointed time, I'm going to wait. I'm not going to complain. I'm not going to murmur. I'm going to wait till my change come. Look at your name and say, maybe your change is coming. But you can't yield your members to distraction. You can't yield your members. So you're, it's going it's to hinder your worship. I know, I know some of us, we, we have this feeling like, man, we're lusting after things. But the Lord wants you to wait. I know your body, your body sometimes gets impatient. Hallelujah. Sometimes your body is allergic to loneliness. I, I, I know. Come on, somebody. It's allergic to, sometimes you just want to be cuddled. Sometimes you just want someone to stroke your hair. Come on, somebody. Sometimes you just want acts of service. I, I know. Sometimes you're just tired of watching love movies. Wondering when mine's going to come. Because some of you don't like the one that you have. You're like, wondering when mine's going to come. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. I'm in the house. I'm in the house. But can you wait? Are you a true worshiper or do you yield your members to things that cause you to move away from God? That was, that was Eve's problem. Eve was not content with Adam. Did y'all know that? That's why she messed with Lila for me. Oh, I'm sorry. That's why she messed with the serpent. You got me. She made love with the serpent because she wasn't content with Adam. She started listening to the voice of the serpent. And then the serpent caused her to reach out for the forbidden thing. When she, I like what St. Bernard Clairvaux says, when she reached out for the forbidden thing, she lost her paradise. See, the enemy wants you to reach out for the forbidden thing so he can cut you from your paradise. Look at your name and say, neighbor, oh, you're a true worshiper. Let me give you one more scripture for this here because I got I to put this in there. I got to put this as a foundation. Hey, Amen. Because we got to stop playing with God. Some of us are playing with God, right? We're playing with, we're giving God our mind, our mouth, and our words, but we're not giving him our body. We're playing with God. <laughs> and then one of my things that's going wrong, because you're playing with God. Oh, shut up, oh, hey. Your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. You've been bought with a price. Ah, yeah, yeah. Here you go, God buys you, and you're trying to run away from him. Come on, somebody. You look at your name and say, neighbor, I've been bought with a price. Oh, man. You got some runaways out here, man. I know some of y'all saw the Harry Tubman movie, but come on. Let's stay in the fold. Come on, somebody. Stay in the fold. <laughs> come on, somebody. Okay, let me, let, me, let me go back. Look, look, look at verse 17. These are, are wells. Now watch this. Without water. 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 17. Watch this. 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 17. Now Paul, while you're, while you're getting there, Peter is dealing with some false teachers. He's dealing with some false prophets that somehow, brother, they, they, they came into the church. And nobody knew where they came from. Nobody knew their pedigree. They started prophesying. They started teaching. And nobody licensed them. You know what they do today? No, we don't know if they pop sign in the foyer. They're so bold in the foyer, but they can't be bold here. We don't, we don't, we don't. They bold on the parking lot. Girl, let me tell you something. God said, well, why you didn't say that here? I, I had a dream about you. No, no, no. Well, why why you share your dream with us? Yeah, but, but see, this was the thing that Peter was dealing with. Peter was dealing with these false prophets and false teachers coming in. Always had a good word. But the reason why they could not say it here because they know their bodies would have been evaluated. Their lifestyle would have been evaluated. You got such a strong, strong prophetic word, but we don't see you in the body. Hallelujah. You're more faithful on Facebook than in the body. It's, fun, it's, 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 it's funny, Coach, somehow some people are so busy, but they got enough time for Facebook and Instagram. But I don't want to be with the body. I'm too busy for the body. Busy body. Okay. 
Okay. Okay. But he talks about this. He says, these false teachers are wells without clouds carried by the, for whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever, for when they speak great swelling words of emptiness, their words don't mean a hill of beans. Hallelujah. God's saying it's empty. Because your life is not right. What's this? They allure through the lust of the flesh, through lewdness, the ones who have actually escaped. The ones who have what? From those who live in error. You got to escape the conformity of the world if you're going to be a true worshiper. Watch this. While they promise them liberty, they themselves are slaves of corruption for by whom a person is overcome, by him also he is brought into... That is the one you worship. Whoever brings you into a bondage is the one you worship. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, you escape the things of the world. Okay, look at verse 20. He said, I don't believe me. For if, after they have the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord Jesus and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled in them and overcome. The latter end is worse for them than in the beginning. For it would have been better for them not to have known the ways of righteousness or way of righteousness than having known it to turn from the holy commandment delivered to them. We're talking about true worshipers. We're talking about worshipers that have escaped the world. Worshipers that have no other desire but to please Jesus. Worshipers that have no other appetite but to want more of Jesus. God is saying, don't run away from the more of my presence that I want to bestow upon you. Don't run away from yielding yourselves to me so that I can show you my glory. Yes, you will have to sacrifice some things that have hindered you, but don't worry. Give it up. Because what you are seeking after is not worthy to be compared to the glory that I'm going to give you. That's the attitude of a worshiper. They know that God has more in store for them. They have no other desire. They refuse to be lukewarm. They refuse to be tepid in the spirit. They refuse to be an adulterer to God. They refuse to take on a Gomer spirit. They are giving themselves devotely to God. Without compromise. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, are you a compromisable Christian? No. We don't want to be compromisable Christians. There's more that God wants to give us. Now, two. Two. Well, a true worship is grateful to God and expresses that gratitude with their mouth, body, and substance. See, you have to give God honor with your substance. Hallelujah to God. Substance. The Bible said, honor the Lord with thy substance. With the first fruit of thy substance. The first fruit of thy substance. Proverbs chapter 3 verse 9. Honor the, honor the Lord with the first fruit of thy substance. When you are not giving God your substance, you're not really giving God glory. Don't you know the Bible says you should not enter the Lord's presence empty-handed? They had to carry something towards God. Now, now Christians, think that, Christians think that we got a bad. No, but the Jews have a bad. The Jews have to give five offerings to God. And you, you're here grunting over your tithes. It makes you grunt. <clears throat> Give tithes. All the churches wanted was my money. Just ask the Jews. That's all God wanted was their offering. Free will offering. Thanksgiving offering. Sin offering. Burn offering. Come on, somebody. Priest offering. They had to give five offerings. And you up here complaining over one. That's all the church talks about is money. Yeah. It's biblical. Because your money is the thing that's hindering you. Hallelujah. Money makes a poor master but a good servant. See, substance. Some say substance. Go to Psalms 96. Psalms 96. Oh, Lord, we give you the honor. Yeah, but he wants your credit card too. You give, you give him God credit without the cord. Oh, something's wrong when the church wants your credit card. Yeah, because you can give it to somebody else. You can give it to Macy's. You can give your credit card to somebody else. They're going to put you in debt. So, hey, they're taking it. Why not God? See, we, we get so religious. 
Church shouldn't be asking for your credit card. But it's okay for you to get it from AC, so. Oh, okay. Okay. What, what else? Psalm 96? Psalm 96. Psalm 96. Psalm 96. Well, oh, I can't wait till the screen works, boy. When the, when the screen works, y'all want to see this little. I need some more collagen, I'm Coach Tom. I need some collagen in my head, Lord. I've been taking my, my cup, waiting for the miracle to happen. <laughs> but that coach right, man, your nails are growing so fast. I'm like, Tch. I said, Lord, make this, make, work a miracle. I don't want to look like Elisha. Come on, somebody. Okay, Psalms, what is it? Psalms 96. Okay, you there? Okay. Go to verse 4. Verse 4. For the Lord is great and greatly to be, he is to be above all gods. We're worshiping the king of kings. Now watch this. For all the gods of the people are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Honor and majesty before, are before him. Strength and beauty in his, are in his what? Verse 7. Give to the Lord, O of the people. Give to the Lord, O families of the people. Give to the Lord glory and strength. Now watch this. The Hebrew word, minister friend, for glory is the word kavod. Kavod is the Hebrew word for glory. Kav, veth, uh, dalet. Kavod. And then the word in Greek is the word doxa. It literally means substance. That's what glory means. Weight. Weighty substance. So when the, the author says give God glory, he's saying give him substance. Not just glory to God. Glory to God. It's offering time now. No, 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 no. Let's stop. Let's pause. Give glory to God. Come on. Okay. Watch this. Next verse. Give to the Lord glory. Do to his name. Bring, 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 and come into his courts. So I had to let this equate prophesy today. Because she's right in the spirit. Because what we do, we bring God nickels and dimes instead of giving him our true glory. We give God the aftermath, but we're holding our glory. God says, listen, you're just in the outer court. That was the first offering. If you want to get deeper, give me your glory. I'm after that one thing that you're afraid to let go of. You have to give it into his courts. This is, this is true worship. And when we can't give God that, our speaking in tongues, our body motions is in vain. That's why Jesus said in Matthew chapter 15, they honor me with their mouths, but they see, because where your treasure is, see, we look at your checkbook, we see where your treasure is. We look at track of your track, your, 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 um, what you spent. We see exactly on your checkbook where your treasure is. And check this out. It doesn't have to be food that people worship. Some people worship books. Hallelujah. They're mind idolatries. Listen, they're, they're, they are addicted to worshiping things to know more than people instead of giving to God. Anything, anything can be an idol. Anything you yield your members to can be a what? Idol. Now three, because of time. I have Ten more minutes. I hear some stomachs growling. Amen. Oh, I love that. Come on. See, prophets, she just said we're hungry for the word because prophets, we don't live but by every, watch this, right now word, not still word, every fresh word, every rhema, as the text says, that proceeds from the mouth of God. Jeremiah to the 15 verse 16 says, thy word was found and I did eat them, not read them. I ate them and they were the joy and the rejoicing of my heart. Job says, I have esteemed your word far above my necessary food. I'm eating your word. Someone say word. That's what you should have an appetite for. If you're a true worshiper, you should have an appetite for the word of God. Because if you're, a fill, if you're a fool already, God can't fill you with his presence. Blessed are they that hunger and thirst. Not, not at the McDonald's. I know that's disgusting. Might as well say, not at the sawgrass. Uh, you know, I do love me some Cracker Barrel. But sometimes, <laughs> we got to have this appetite for God's word. I, you know, I feel some type of way, Minister Jason, when I, when I skip reading the word for one day. 
That makes me miserable. I, I can't sleep. If it's 1159, I have to study the word of God. I block everybody out, my children, everyone, because I have to get something during that day. Some people will miss three days studying the word of God, thinking that God is with them. Oh, God gave me this dream, but you, you're not filling yourself with the word of God. Okay. Let me tell y'all, let's show y'all scripture. Colossians chapter 3, verse 16. Because of time, five minutes. Colossians chapter 3, verse 16. How many ready to shift your worship? Paul says, let the word of God dwell in you. Let the what? Dwell in you in all. Someone say all. Wisdom. Do y'all know what that means? That you should not only be satisfied with just spiritual wisdom. God wants to give you wisdom in any situation that you're dealing with. The word has an answer for that situation. So it was not meant or designed for the believer who is addicted to God's word to be confused. The word was a joy and the rejoicing of my heart. So if I'm reading the word, it should give me joy. If I'm not in the word, I'm going to be joyless. But watch this. Teaching and a in psalms. That means songs of praise. It's the, it's the Greek word somoi. It means to pluck the string instrument. That's why he came up here now. He ready to worship. He came up here. He, he ready. He came up here. He already knew where I was going. The Spirit told him. Like, psalms. Watch this. Hymns. Some say hymns. Y'all know where hymns come from? Hymns, sometimes, if you look at it from an etymological root word, it can be a deep word, humnos. Humnos is really where the gods begin to worship other gods, like Zeus. But then when you look at the word real closely, it's where you get the word hymen from. When a woman has not been touched, her hymen is attached. But when her husband comes, oh, come on now. I won't say lover. He breaks the hymen. And intimacy begins to happen. There are some rims in heaven that will not break until you shift from psalms to hymns. There are some angels that will not be activated until we shift our worship where we attract angels. I'm telling you, that's why some people like Benny Hinn and William Brown, they understood the power of worship because worship attract angels on deeper levels to work miracles on your behalf. Glory be to God. That hymen must be broke. There's something that's stopping you from becoming one with God. Now check this out. Are y'all ready for this? Make sure we have all adults in it. Okay, we got a couple. So I'm going to say it in a type of way. After hymns, is spiritual ecstasy. That's where these unusual sounds come from. Uh-oh. Well, it becomes so good. I'm not going to quote you. I don't know what to say to you, Lord. But it just feels so good. Okay, somebody. That's when you're filled with the Spirit, not with wine in excess, but you're filled with the Spirit where you start speaking pneumaticos all day. The Greek word, spiritual songs that the natural man cannot understand. Well, you're going to spirit, man. That's the, that's the, 